Welcome back. I'm Chris Baseford. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to dive into the I.O. setup within Pro Tools. Very powerful part and something that is kind of misunderstood, believe it or not. But it's basically how the hardware of your setup speaks with the software of your of your setup and how it all interconnects. It's kind of the central nervous system. So you should at least be aware of how it functions. And this is something that's probably, I get the most calls from clients or friends saying, oh, I can't, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting any output to my speakers. I don't know what's going on. I, it worked yesterday, but it's not working today. And most of the time it has to do with something not mapping correctly in the IO setup. So we're gonna quickly do a very brief overview of what the IO setup is, how to set it up and a few of the common problems that people run into with the I.O. setup. So I've got a session here. This has got one of my custom I.O. setups in it, but find the I.O. menu. It's in the setup menu, I.O. right there, okay? You got your input tab, output tab, bus tab, insert tab. If you've got mic preamps, hardware insert delays, et cetera, we're not gonna talk about that right now, but this here is basically your routing matrix. This is the software labels for your hardware labels. So, you know, it, this is your hardware up here. I'm on an HD rig. I've got 16 analog inputs. And really quickly, if you're, if you're, if something's ever not working and you just want, you're like, I don't know what's going on. If you just delete, you know, select all of everything and and delete it and then hit default it will probably get it kind of it, it knows what your hardware configuration is and it will probably get it back to at least to where it's functioning and then you can go and rename stuff or whatever keep in mind that it it, it writes over you know that particular uh you know you just deleted the io setup that you had but at least it gets you back to where you know, okay, I know what's going on. It, it's routed properly, you know, one to one, two to two, et cetera. And it's, you know, it just kind of gets you back to square one. So just just know that that's actually a really good button to, to, to use. If I'm on a new system that's got a hardware configuration, you know, that's different, and I'm starting a session from scratch or I want to create a new IO, typically what I'll do is I'll basically delete everything and then hit default for each tab and just start from scratch. So anyways, um, so you've got your input tab, your output tab, your bus tab. The bus tab here is, this is kind of where you need to know what's going on, okay? This is where people get very confused. This is where people uh, uh, freak out because their Pro Tools system's not working, because they can't hear anything, nothing's coming out the speakers, blah, 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 blah. I would say nine times out of 10 when I get that panicked phone call, nine times out of 10, it's, it's an issue right on this page. IO bus. Okay. You just got to wrap your head around this and, and I'll try to explain it the best I can. And if somebody else has a better way to explain this, please, please, please share with the rest of us because it, it's, it's something that unless you worked in the analog realm, or even if you did work in the analog realm, it's sometimes tough for people to understand. The left side of this bus menu Think of it as your digital virtual, you know, I.O., okay? This is all the I.O. in Pro Tools. If you can see here, this first output is called main out. And you see in my, in my, uh, on my page here, on, my, on the output that I have it selected to do for the tracks, it says main. Okay, so that's the label for my internal Pro Tools routing. Now it says map to output, one, two three, four, five, six, all the way down. That's my hardware outputs, okay? And I've named them one, two, three, four. You can name them whatever you want. Just know that this left side is, is kind of your virtual digital busing, and this right side is your hardware, okay? Now you say, well, why, why can't it just be the same? Why can't main out just be one, two? And why can't mix out be three, four? And why can't blah, blah, blah? This is actually a very powerful thing because if you only have two outputs and somebody has sent you a session where maybe they've got like a sub mixer or they've got a, a summing bus where they're using multiple outputs, instead of having to go and change the routing over here, you can go in here and let's say, okay, I've got, I've got uh, three stereo 
I've got three stereo outputs here, okay? One of them's going to one, two, one of them's going to three, four, one of them's going to five, six. If I only had a output one and two, this three, four, and five, six, this mix out and ref out is not going to be active. Any tracks routed to that, you're not going to hear. Because if you don't have three, four, and five, six, you're it's just not gonna, it's just gonna make them inactive. So instead of going and changing them here and then messing up the routing, you can go to this page and you can route mix out to one and two. And you can route ref out to one and two. You can route everything in this left side that's in your output page, or that's assigned to outputs here, you can assign them to the hardware of your choice. This is very, very powerful, okay? This is like this is like a summing, almost like an internal summing mixer right here, all right? You used to not be able to do that in Pro Tools, and, and although this is a confusing page for a lot of people, it actually make things, make, makes things a lot easier when you're working on projects that came from other studios or that have other setups, okay? So just be aware of, of that, and, and it is a very powerful thing. So going back to that common, that common problem that I get is when somebody gets a session, and I, I don't have one here handy, unfortunately. Maybe somebody can take a screenshot and send it to me, or next time it happens to you, or next time it happens to me, I'll add it. But basically what happens is they'll get a session where all of their outputs are grayed out even though it says the name of like one and two and it's grayed out and they're like why is it grayed out i don't know what's going on if you come to this page and you look on the left side whatever every whatever your tracks are set to look to see what it's mapped to and if it's grayed out it means it's mapped to something that you don't have in your hardware setup and all you have to do is click here and select whatever hardware output you want it to come out like I said, that's 9 out of 10 panicked phone call problems that I get from friends and colleagues and clients and, and uh, people who have been using Pro Tools forever. Um, it's just something that slips by and it's something that you don't think of. So please, please, please learn how to use this page. Hopefully, like I just gave you a little, like that's just a, again, this is, this is very basic stuff. I'm not going to go into advanced stuff unless you've got questions about it and then I will. But if you're ever having problems with your outputs, just go to this page and make sure whatever your tracks are set to in your mixer or in your edit window, which is going to be this over on the left side, is routed to a piece of hardware that is actually part of your system. So if you've got, you know, an Apollo, make sure it's coming out your monitor output. If you've got, you know, uh, you know whatever you have, you know, whatever, you know, Focusrite interface or, or Avid interface, whatever, make sure it's mapped correctly. And like I said, this is, this is kind of your virtual routing. This is your hardware. This needs to route properly to this. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I think that will solve problems for a few people once you realize how to use that. So um, like I said, I'm not going to cover all of the all of the the details of this. I just kind of wanted to cover some of the basic stuff and uh, the common problem. So, thanks for watching. If this was helpful, click the like button. Please subscribe. I've got more videos coming. Um, so hopefully, this is going to be a regular occurrence where I'm just going to keep lots of lots of basic videos coming out, and then we'll probably get into some more advanced stuff later. And if by all means, if you have a question or comment put it down below and, uh, and I'll get back to it as soon as I can. So thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for some new videos and hopefully that helps.